Welcome back to Inside Tech Tomo. Once again, I am joined with Kimber Hopkins. She's here with the Humane Society. And we are talking about the News Channel's sixth, fifth annual coat and blanket drive and the impact that it's really having on all of the pets this year as well. We added them to the coat and blanket drive. And I know it's actually been a great turnout so far. This is still lots of time to go till January the 4th. We're going to be collecting those needs. But we're going to be talking with Kimber about those needs. But before we do, Kimber, right before the break, we're talking about you know, adoptions and stuff. How much does it cost, though, if you're interested in adopting an animal? It costs $105, which is really a bargain if you go get an animal free and go take it to the vet. It's going to cost you twice as much. In that cost, they are tested for heartworms, on heartworm preventative. They have gotten their coronavirus shot, their Bordetella, all of their booster shots. Um, they are spayed and neutered, microchipped, and have their rabies vaccination. And the microchip is actually really cool. And I know we just aired a story not too long ago here, right here on News Channel 6, about an owner, I believe it was. Um, they found their pet in California or something and being reunited mm -hmm. because of the microchip. So what is the microchip in case people don't know? Well, the microchip, um, if for any reason the animal gets lost, um, you can take it to a vet. If you find the animal, you can take the animal to the vet. They can scan it. If it, it turns up in the Animal Services Center, they'll scan it. Um, and they, it has a number, and you call this number and, um, on the microchip, and it'll, re, it'll relocate. I mean, it'll tell you where the family is. That's so cool. So that's really cool. It's a way to, you know, if your pet's lost, then they can reunite. I believe this one, the family's from Virginia, and the animal eight years later was in mm -hmm. California. So that's so neat, and what a great thing to have for your pet, too. You know, I mean, in case, unfortunately, it ever gets loose or something like that were to happen and gets lost. So... Such a neat thing, and that's all included in the $105, correct? Yes, ma'am. Unless you're getting a puppy or a kitten, uh, it is $75 to adopt a cat. Okay. Um, when an animal is too young to be spayed or neutered, it causes a lot of health issues. It can cause them to be incontinent, and we don't want that for any animal. So um, it's a $100 deposit, and at the time that they are spayed or neutered, you will get that $100 back. Okay. All right, something to keep in mind now. A lot of questions, or you may get this question a lot, what is your connection to the city animal services now? Because I understand you can go up there and you can look at the animals there, but there is a direct you know, link back to the Humane Society. Can you talk about that? Yes. Um, like I said, there's probably about 40 to 50 animals that come in every day. If they have a collar, they've got five, di five days. If they do not have a collar, it's three days. And if it's owner surrender, if they need space, then they can put them down at that time. So once they clear and no one has claimed them, um, they can be put up for adoption. And if you would like to look at one of their animals, you can also go to PetTango.com and look at the animals that are considered adoptable and maybe adopt one of those animals directly through us. And that way it's not really based upon space that we have, you know, our space issues with the Humane Society. And again, we're talking about the Animal Reclaim Center in Wichita Falls. So I know I said the city, but that's in Wichita Falls. You can go up there, go inside, and, and look, correct? And then, Or correct. you can also come out to the Humane Society. So kind of two options and lots of pets that need homes to check out and hopefully make a good match. For Definitely. Your and if you would like to go and spend some time with you, they have some little meeting rooms that you can spend time with that little animal. That's awesome. That's so great. And does all of this need to go through you guys and if they would like to go up there, can they just go up there on their own or contact them? How do you recommend that being done? Well, first off, I would call the Animal Services Center to definitely see when they're open. And then while they're open, you can go in there and you can look and just kind of explain to them what you are interested in doing. They want to save lives mm -hmm. just as much as we do. They want, they're into rescue. And so they would love for you to come in, spend some time with an animal and possibly adopt that animal because the odds are not very good for it if we don't have space. Absolutely. Well, kind of going back then to the need, you know, of these animals and the need that so many people may even have in Tex Home and now taking care of their animals. What are those needs and what, you know, what are you asking for to meet those needs then? Now that we have the cold, um, there are a lot of families who still don't want to bring their animals inside. And once the temperatures drop, they can die because of the weather. Um, and also their water can freeze and they have no water to drink. Um, so therefore they do need like dog houses, they need blankets to put inside those dog houses, 
coats would be wonderful because there are some dogs that do not have that much fur. Um, it's not like a great big husky that has all the fur that's used to those kind of temperatures. Whereas you have a chihuahua that has short hair and it goes outside and it's just freezing. I have two pointers and they're short haired. And when I put a cam, you know, a camouflage uh, coat on them, they're like so happy because, oh, I feel nice and warm. <laughs> so Something to keep in mind. I know we always said if people are cold, then pets are cold too, right? right. So what do you recommend if someone maybe you know, doesn't have a dog house for, for their pet, do you recommend that they try to put the animal in the garage if they can if it's cold? Or is that, does that even help if you did something like that? Well, it depends on the ventilation. As long as she's got something to block the cold mm -hmm. um, and maybe some hay to help keep them warm. Even though they have a dog house, they still need blankets. They still need hay in there to keep that heat in there because otherwise it may escape. Sure. Um, there's just certain criteria that you want to look at and you know what else is going to be in there that if there's antifreeze they could get into the antifreeze and that could kill them. Absolutely so maybe even if you had a crate an area blocked off then if that was kind of your only option would you say that's better? Just that, that's better than protection correct? Right any kind of protection <laughs> just make sure um, that there are no chemicals that they can get into sure. and kind of safeguard their for their protection and but if there's nothing else uh, to use and of course do that. Yeah. That's better than them being in outside and having to endure the weather. But that's a good point. You know, if you can, maybe the gates or something put up a little, a you know, a little safeguard for them so that way they're not able to get into anything. Um, now, the needs I know, of course, the dog houses, like you mentioned, the blankets and so forth. What what happens with all of those donations after they come in? How are they handed out, or where do they go? Well. We'll work with other organizations together to help pass those out to people in need. Uh, we get certain phone calls saying uh, they need blankets or that they do need some coats. Maybe they might need that or especially with the dog houses, all they have to do is call the Humane Society, which is 855-4941. And we will try to put them with the right person. We try to put them with the correct contact person for whatever their need is. We try to meet their need. Absolutely. And I understand that you've also had lumber donated, which I think is pretty cool because you're kind of making dog houses. I mean, that's such a big need right now. Like you mentioned, with these temperatures just dropping, it's freezing outside. You just walk out there for a minute. You can tell how cold it is. So dog houses again, how is that lumber helping you guys out? Well, Lowe's, someone called Lowe's because I saw that we, uh, Don Herzog, um, is actually building these dog houses for these dogs that are in need um, so that they won't be cold and um, have to endure a very harsh winter. Um, that's something that they don't want to do. But they contacted Lowe's and Lowe's donated or um, gave them a discount on some lumber. And so he is building these uh, dog houses for people in need. That is so cool. What a great thing and such a great act from him as well so appreciate him taking time now real quickly before we go ahead and take another break if someone sees an animal in distress you know maybe maybe they don't have the need personally but they see others who have a need how do they need to go about that and you know i know sometimes they may feel well i don't want to get anybody in trouble i don't want to seem like i'm tattling on anybody but you know i would like to take care of this pet how do they go about that i would call animal control and what animal control does is they'll investigate it. They'll come and look and see if there's a dire need for that animal. Um, I do know of someone last night who saw a situation where this animal is actually chained to a couch and tried to get a hold of the owner and they weren't there and the water was frozen. And that's not good either. But um, what I would do is call animal control and have them investigate. Um, if they can, they can give the owner some pointers and hopefully not have to take that animal unless it is in need. Sure. Well, always great tips. We appreciate you sharing. And we have so much more, including how your generous donations text HOMA. And I do mean generous. Kimber can testify to that here. So we are going to talk about how those are already benefiting so many. That's all after the break here on Inside Text HOMA. Welcome back to Inside Tech's HOMA. Once again, we are talking about the News Channel 6 Code and Blanket Drive, not only benefiting people at Faith Mission, but also pets too this year, pets at the Humane Society. And Kimber's been telling us 
all about the Humane Society. The benefits of this um, have actually just been overwhelming. I know the coat and blanket drive for the pets. Can you talk a little bit about the donations and how they've been? Well, actually, Saturday we had quite a few people who were coming in because they had seen this on TV that were bringing donations of coats and blankets and um, everything that we, we kind of have been talking about getting some donations for. They were coming out and actually adopting because they had seen it on TV and they thought, well, while we're here, let's go visit and um, decided to go ahead and adopt. And we actually had 20 adoptions on Saturday wow. during our um, Home for the Holidays event. And our adoptions, I called the day, we're at 43 adoptions so far, completed adoptions this month, which I think is a record. We're normally at that at half, you know, the month wow. before we get there. That is really so impressive. We're, we're so excited for the media coverage that has been going on. And um, a lot of our animals have found homes because of this coat drive, because of the media attention that it's bringing the issue of adoption versus going and go buy an animal. Mm -hmm. I saw today on TV that um, there was this online place and people were, it's actually a puppy mill and um, they were not getting healthy animals, whereas ours, they're completely vetted and they make, they make the best pets. I was talking to somebody today um, who's one of my clients and he said, if you ever need me to do a testimony about adoption, Shep is the best dog we have Aww. ever had. And he, and they do, shelter pets make the best, you know, companions and uh, there's so many health benefits to having an animal. Um, but it's just so amazing how people will open their hearts to these animals. And I have, like I said, I have four we've adopted total and one that just showed up on our front porch. And oh. it's just rescue is so important to us because it's saving a life. Mm -hmm. It's giving an animal, they're not damaged goods. They actually have so much to give and to, so much love to give to people. That is so impressive though, and how that's all linked together, it's isn't it? It's all linked it? together, yes. How, how amazed are you with the generosity of Texoma? I know we talk about this time and time again because it doesn't matter what the need is. Texoma just seems to step up. I mean, just generous people living in this area. Well, we still kind of have that small town feel, even though we're the big city. But there's so many more people here that I feel if you tell them that there's a need, mm -hmm. they step up to the plate and they say, how can we help you? What can we do for your organization? Mm -hmm. And they get the ball rolling and here they come in and they bring everything that you needed. Um, I know that whenever we had the horses that came in, People generously gave hay for the horses that came in that were in need. That's pretty cool. So not only are your donations of blankets and coats and pet dog houses and, you know, dog sweaters and you name it, the list can go on and on, helping so many pets who are suffering in this cold weather, but they're also saving lives through adoption. So that's something to be proud of, Texoma. That's pretty that's pretty cool, Kimber. So, Kimber, so thanks for sharing that with us as well. Now, we have some events coming up, or the Humane Society has some events coming up that you'd like to share with us. And I know this could also lead to even more adoptions. So, hoping to, I know, set an even higher record for this month of adoptions. Correct. In fact, um, we had taken this one dog to PetSmart because of this publicity. We had said that we were going to be at PetSmart. And someone came out to look at our dogs and donate, too. And this was her first time that she'd been out. She came in as a mama. All of her puppies got adopted. She kept getting overlooked. And because we took her to PetSmart, she now has a forever home. She actually went home today. And we were so excited for her because she is just, you know, she'll touch your heart. And there have been several that have done that. And it's getting the animals out. It get, it's giving them a break. We're learning to kind of learn their personality, how well they ride in the car. Um, are they barking, like I've talked about earlier? How well they behave with children and other dogs whenever we're at PetSmart or Petco. Uh, we go to Tractor Supply, Books a Million. Um, when we're at Books a Million, uh, you can make a purchase and 10% of your purchase goes to the Humane Society as a donation. Wow. And so, yes, yeah, so we've got some really generous businesses that want to give. When we're having our event, there were several businesses that donated door prizes that were wonderful. El Chico, Gidgets. Um, Smith's Garden Town, All American Car Wash, Sullivan Toyota, uh, just to name a few that have stepped up to the plate to help us out. And I know we're going to talk about a few more coming up, so stay with us, Texoma, more inside Texoma with Humane Society after the break.